I refer to the entry, my entry in the registry of members' interests, and can I also congratulate the honourable member for St Helens for securing this important and vital debate in the very concise and articulate way in which he marshalled the case for the UK music. Uh, I also want to pay tribute to uh, Michael Duggar, who has led uh, UK music so diligently and effectively in the course of the past few years. And like everybody here, I wish him all the best of the future. And that extends to Andy Heath, who's also been chair of um, UK Music. I wish all of them the best. And we look forward to whoever both emerge in these roles and will continue to work effectively with them. Um, I remember standing here, Ms McDonough, almost 19 years ago, having secured what was probably at that point the first ever debate into the music industry in this house. Having come straight from the concert hall floor, um, having played with uh, Runrig and Big Country, and having been the only MP that appeared on top of the pops, I was very keen that some of the issues around the music industry was taken up by Parliament and was addressed by MPs. And following that debate, was almost immediately the all-party music group was formed, which, was formed, which the minister was obviously a very notable chair a few years ago. Um, what that did, I think, more than anything else, and most importantly, was to bring the sector, bring the industry together with parliamentarians. And over the course of the year, I, I think this has emerged as a, an effective conduit between what we do in this house, being available to the, all the members in the music industry. And I think out of all the things that we've achieved in the course of the, the past 20 or so years, I think that was really, really important. Um, when I first came to this house, it was the days of plenty in the music industry. Uh, I'm sure most people will remember that. CD sales were at an all-time high. Live music was in incredibly good shape was the start of some of the really important arena tours. But out in the horizon that was just starting to emerge this dark shadow that was going to hit all of our creative sector, and that was digitisation and the threats and also the opportunities was presented by this. Music was the first in to digitisation. It was the first in because it was the easiest to be cloned, to be replicated. And that made it vulnerable to the pirates, made it vulnerable to those who wanted to make a quick buck on the backs of the creativity of our artists across the country. And these days it was just Napster. I heard somebody refer to that earlier. And it was a big challenge to the music industry in those days. Um, it was a tough time in dealing with all this, but I want to pay tribute to the music industry in the way that it's responded to that challenge in the course of the 20 years. We're not on top of everything yet, but huge progress has been made, and I think that was in response to the many challenges that were put forward. There was closing down the opportunities that was done by the pirates, responding positively to the new technologies and ensuring that the new services were made available so that there was a positive choice to be made and that the sources of music was coming that way. And I think that we're, we're not totally on top of it. Huge progress has been made in, in that time. So it has been quite remarkable about how all that's been taken up. There are still huge issues, um, Ms McDonough, as you would expect. There's, we still have issues to do with piracy. In fact, some of the pirates come in cruise liners now in the way they appear in the form of the giant tech companies like YouTube and Google. And I think some of the issues around these have to be properly addressed. And I'll come forward with a couple of suggestions how that might actually be done and tackled in the course of my, my spe speech. But we're still leading the world in music, just as we are practically across every single creative sector, whether that's in fashion, whether it's design, whether that's in film, whether it's in television. But it's in music where it's, in the last few years, it's been most notable, and I won't repeat some of the things that have been said about some of the amazing artists who have had the biggest selling albums in the world in the course of the past few years, though I will mention Louis Capaldi, because I've managed to get to see him a couple of times recently, and the fact that he's a fellow Scot. It's quite remarkable, uh, the success of... Uh, Louis Capaldi in the course of the last year, mirroring almost exactly what Adele achieved just a few years ago with her amazing albums. And it shows just the reach of music from across these islands. And, and why is that? I, mean, I, I think if we could bottle it and try and sum it up somehow, it would be quite remarkable. It's something about the way we've culturally set up this country where people are allowed to develop the talents and arrangements and, and make sure that they have an opportunity to come forward with some of the fantastic works of imagination and talent. But it's also something to do with the industry too, and I want to praise the industry and the way that they ensure that artists are properly resourced, that they're promoted effectively, that, that they are being able to be sold internationally in the way it's all packaged. I mean, things don't happen by accident, and we have a successful music industry because the creativity of the people who make this music and the infrastructure that supports it, which is the music industry. And that is why it's so important that we support this just now. Music is still the field of dreams where young people can secure a 
career on the strength of their imagination and their talent. But it also means for people just to experience and enjoy music. Music timetables and chronicles people's lives. It's an important feature of our everyday experience and for all our memories. It's even just great just to get together with friends and bash out a few tunes and just to enjoy it. But it's what we do as politicians to support the music industry that's really, really important. Firstly, and most importantly, we have to ensure that our artists, our musicians, and the talent that we have is properly rewarded for the fantastic works that they produce. If we do one thing, it's to ensure that our artists are properly rewarded for what they do. And that's why I fully support the call to have the EU copyright directive fully adopted in UK law. Well, this simply has to happen. It's the single biggest intervention, I believe, that we can make that would most assist the industry and our artists. In one stroke, it can effectively tackle the incalcitrance of the large tech companies, the pitiful amounts that YouTube pay our artists for these, the music that they produce, and simply appalling to exploit and our, our artists in such a way that should be rewarded properly. More than that, the, the government, I believe, should consider the economic harms that's caused by copyright infringement as part of their legislation around online harms. And again, something which is in the gift of government that be, could be done almost immediately. There is real harm caused by online, and I hope the minister will look at this again as a, a real way forward to include online harms when it comes to um, harms, uh, uh, digital harms that, that they're looking at just now. And we have to do something to ensure that the, the appalling decision to leave the European Union doesn't make a terrible situation even worse for our musician. The ending of freedom of movement is the single biggest Brexit threat to our musicians and to our artists. And we must do everything possible to address the fallout that will inevitably come by this decision to stop musicians travelling freely across a continent. And as my honourable friend from Glasgow Central mentioned in, in Glasgow just now, the last of the huge UK music festivals has taken place with incredible Celtic connections. And as the name suggests, it's connections and it's global and it brings artists around the world. Even before we leave the European Union, and, and my honourable friend made reference to this, there have been genuine concerns just about visa anxiety, if we could call it anything else, and people being confused about what their rights are to travel and what it will mean for them as artists and musicians. It has to be addressed. And there is a number of solid suggestions about how this could be taken on. Music touring is where artists make their money. And we've got to make it easy for them to play internationally is one of the, the greatest thrills and experiences that musicians can have. And to close that down, as we are doing with Ending Freedom of Movement, is something that will impact on every music musician and artist in this country. Any freedom movement will inevitably bring costs for visa arrangements, for bureaucracy, and just the confusion about how all of this happens. So I totally support UK Music and the Musicians Union and their call for a, a single EU-wide live music touring passport to avoid these restrictions. And I really hope that the government takes it seriously. I know the minister has looked at this before, and I know that this is something that is within the, the gift of this government to do. Because if one initiative could solve this, it would be to do with that. But there's another issue that's come up, and it's not been mentioned so far. And I refer to a report that was done by um, Basca's former CEO, Vic Bain. And it's about the gender gap in the music industry. It has to be addressed. It has, has to be stopped. There's a fantastic report that Vic Bain produced very recently where she outlined that less than 20% of signed acts by major labels are female. This simply cannot continue and it cannot go on. And gender equality and the gender gap has to be properly addressed when it comes to the music industry. And it's almost bizarre that an industry that's inhabited by progressive young people have allowed a gender gap to emerge such as this, and we have to really ensure that we get on top of this. Now, there might be a number of reasons. Uh, the whole lad culture of male camaraderie and bands that's gone back for the decades might be, have something to do with it, but whatever that is, I believe that this has to be addressed. And we have to start to get serious about sexism in music. Music is sexy, but it doesn't have to be sexist. 
And I think that we really have to ensure that we start to tackle some of the more serious issues when it comes to this in the music industry. And I think we should all be up to the challenge as we move forward. There is real and significant issues there. But music is for everybody, as everybody said. I had a fantastic history, Ms. McDonnell, Ms. McDonnell, of having an opportunity to have a career in the music industry. I believe everybody should have that right. Everybody should have the opportunity. And I really hope that as we go forward, the music industry continues to support our artists, but government does more to ensure that we put the legislation in place that helps.